We live in uncertain times. At a minimum, I want them to think maybe we would use it. With global tensions escalating and faith in the establishment being eroded, increasing numbers of people are turning to self-sufficiency as a kind of insurance against disaster. You never know what's going to happen. You've got to go and get water, you've got to go and get food, you've got to go and get firewood. That training is key. These people are labelled preppers, a term loaded with baggage thanks to the extreme stereotype imported from the US and enhanced by the media. Somebody give some help over here! In the States, Silicon Valley billionaires, people who have made their money forecasting the future, are buying up luxury bunkers in preparation for the apocalypse. We have bunkers in the UK as well. One of them is situated in a farmer's field near Brekin, rented for a pound a year by Jim Sherritt. Jim, Hello. good to meet you. Can we come in? Of course you can. Great. This is metre thick reinforced concrete roof, walls and floor underneath reinforced concrete with a bitumen seal and then a brick base on the outside. These were designed to withstand a nuclear blast. And it'll still work today? It would still work today. Better protection than what most of the people in the village would get. When you talk about Cold War and nuclear bombs, especially with the younger generation, and you start telling them how you were preparing for it, they don't believe you. And I think a lot of people didn't want to know about what happens when things go boom. Nuclear war is a possibility most people prefer not to contemplate. But this is not an option available to emergency planners. When a bomb goes off, the airwave comes through, shoots right down through here, and would register on here how powerful the blast is. If that goes up to there, you panic. Toxin, Papa One! Toxin, Papa One! What would happen to this outpost? You'd have a three-man crew down here right. for 21 days minimum right. to record and sound the alarms. So if you're going above ground, you've got to go all suited up. When I started restoring this, people would say, you're daft, you're restoring a nuclear bunker. Then you had Brexit, then you had Trump, and now you're getting questions like, so what's prepping all about? You say, well, prepping's a bit like life insurance. It's something we all have, but we don't want to cash in. Jim, do you have a family? Five kids. You've got five kids. It's a three-man outpost. Who yep. comes down? We all come down. Anyone else? No, me, the wife, five kids. <laughs> I think I'll be crammed enough as it is. Where do you go to the toilet? We've got a toilet. Really? That's your toilet in there. It's basically a bucket with a lid on it. You certainly need the toilet when the bombs start flying. Do you have enough faith in the government and in society that after 21 days you, you go up above ground and there's something there waiting for you? I think there'll be something waiting for us. But what remains to be seen? Do you just come back down, pull the hatch down, and you climb out and march on to some place where people have all gathered? How long do you think it would take for society breaks down for people, let's start, so it's medieval, so people are like running about in gangs, doing bad stuff? Primal Bushcraft run this urban survival and prepping skills course from a country park outside Edinburgh. <sighs> course leader Matt Smith has noticed an increased interest in people wanting to learn survival techniques. People in cities and certainly large towns, urban environments, if something happened and everyone knew they had a stash of food, you know, a stash of water, and medical supplies or whatever, guess where they're going? They're coming to your house. But when you talk about things like societal breakdown and that sort of thing, people would say, you know, this is kind of scaremongering, this is not going to happen, why are you flogging this one? If people are scared, then let's give them the experience and the training to help save and preserve life if something should happen. But also, if they're worried about it, once you've given them the training, they go, do you know what, actually, I feel better, I've, I've mitigated that fear a bit. What do you most want to sort of find out that you don't know already? I just want to make sure that the knowledge I have, I can apply in, a, in the real world. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully for pleasure, not for, uh, for survival. You can use it as an adhesive or like put it over a cut to keep it sealed. You had an interest in this sort of thing for a long time? Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Where do you think that stems from? Dislike of people. Re is it really? <laughs> yeah. What happens if one day something bad happens? I, I, I just wouldn't know what to do, and it's just great actually to pick up some of these skills. And yeah. Especially, I think, as a woman, don't yeah. you think? It's sort of, um, yeah, you have to rely on yourself. 
Johnny, what's happened? Uh, I've cut my arm off. <laughs> They're not expecting this, are they? No. Go on, give us a squirt. <laughs> I sort of feel a bit ill, to be honest. Honestly. Good luck, Johnny. Thank you very much. <laughs> See you in a bit. Basically, when it all goes peaked on and there's no emergency services, the emergency services look after themselves first. And what do they go away with after speaking to you? For Confidence. Help! Help! Somebody get some help over here! Help me! You're right. Somebody help me! Keep it on, keep it on. Right, mate. Yes. Yeah. Right, you're going to be alright. Don't worry about it, right? Get you a nice brew when you're done, you'll be fine, right? He's got a vein coming down here, it's good to hit the bone. You're never going to have nurses, vets, you know, doctors at hand. It's going to be Joe Bloggs with the limited bit of skills he's got. We'll just stain clothing. Um, yeah, we'll stay having But you know what? It's fine. Shit happens, huh? Yeah. <laughs> How did that go, do you think? Well, well, aye. We were trying to catch his initial. <gasps> but somebody's got to take charge. Yeah. Job done. Job done, mate. High five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Closure on. For most people, disappearing into the woods is very much a worst case scenario. But if Britain was struck by a viral pandemic, you may need to survive for up to three months without leaving the house. Prepper Jay Oliver is confident he can do just that. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is part of the supplies that we have here. So, fantastic. There's quite a good range of stuff here. You're gonna eat well, right? Do your neighbors know that you do this? Chances are you're not gonna have a conversation about prepping with your neighbor. The world comes into sheep, sheep dogs, and wolves. Wolves, one, set of people that will take advantage and target the sheep. And then you have people like emergency services, soldiers, private security contracts and stuff like that, that are the sheepdogs. These are the people with the skills and the ability to be able to stand up and actually try and defend themselves and other people. To be able to find those like-minded people can be quite difficult if you don't have that kind of central hub of people to go to. <laughs> We've got some pretty slick branding. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is very, very key for us to be able to have a, a professional image online. We do regular live streams, and there we are, we're live. Oh, great. We've, we've, got, got, a, we've got a viewer. Hello. I don't know who that is yet. Oh, God, is, is, it really is going on, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Carl saying uh, the media portrays us as yeah. idiots as tin foil hat helmets. wearing bunker in the back garden. Yeah, absolutely. I told you, we don't talk about the bunkers. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, have you got a question for us? Probably for Jay rather than me, but <laughs> do do send in a question. I'd be quite good at this, wouldn't I? People, a lot of people. Hey, James, the media can be quite unfair. I don't prep for zombies or anything like that. I like to be prepared for other things that may commonly happen, such as James. What what? Car accident, job loss, flooding. I joined because you are family orientated and don't make me feel alone in my prepping. That's one of the things I think is is key about this. People like a sense of belonging to to a group and that kind of understand and can will share ideas and stuff like that. If I was in my hometown and I, I didn't have this, I potentially wouldn't know anyone else that would be doing it. We're, so it'd be we're pack animals after all. That's it. And the idea with this is we're trying to find like-minded people. But we're not wolves. Not wolves. In the event of a global disaster, a gas mask, water filter and tomahawk may be of limited use. That wasn't meant to do that, was it? But as an antidote to creeping complacency, brought on by the convenience of modern life. Sorry. The prepper's mentality is perhaps something to be celebrated. 